Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at brewers and rusty blackbirds during fall migration. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be taking a closer look at rusty and brewers blackbirds during the fall migration. So here are our two target species. We have the Brewer's Blackbird on the left and the Rusty Blackbird on the right. Quite often in your field guides, they'll mention that you should take a look at the glossy areas on these birds. Well, if you were to rely on that characteristic with these two images, you'd get a completely opposite because the Rusty Blackbird here looks very, very uh, glossy in this image. So that's so dependent on lighting and angle that I, I seldom rely on that feature and I look for some of the more structural type features that we can, uh, we can focus on. You can see both birds do have pale eyes. Uh, there is a slight difference in the bill shapes with the rusty blackbird appearing to have a slightly longer bill. And the reason for that is it's narrower at the base and this tends to make that bill look longer. There's also a slight curvature to the upper culmin of the uh, rusty blackbird and Brewer's blackbird bill should look fairly straight. You'll find that if side by side, you can easily tell that Brewer's Blackbirds do have longer legs and they should have a slightly longer looking tail. But we are going to want to consider um, these birds in different plumages as well. And we do have other Blackbirds that will be among them uh, in those mixed flocks that we'll be encountering during fall migration. So let's have a look at several Blackbirds here. Here are records from Fermilab's surveys that uh, have been going on for the past 33 years. And I have um, provided you with records for you know, five different species here. Our two target species, the Rusty and Brewers are here. And you can see their migrational patterns um, because they are mostly migrants for us, are pretty, pretty much the same. Uh, in spring migration, we do have uh, Rusty Blackbirds showing up maybe mid to late February, and they're with us till just the beginning of May, more or less. And brewers kind of fit that same pattern, although it looks like the records here are more sporadic. We don't get as many brewers as we do rusties. In the fall, we have rusties showing up here towards the end of September, and they're with us through November pretty uh, regularly, uh, and then with more sporadic records in December. And brewers are coming in a, a bit later. They're th with us November and into December. Uh, both species we can find uh, in December and even in January, uh, but those records are pretty rare. So we don't expect to see them very often at that time. Uh, our most common blackbird that we're going to encounter is going to be the red winged blackbird. And you can see that according to these uh, graphs that we do have that bird available to us all year round. Um, but the, the records in January and December are quite sporadic, uh, not, not to be expected. So the arrival of uh, red-winged blackbirds toward mid-February um, usually is the beginning of our spring migrations as far as passerines. And they'll be with us then all through the whole spring and breeding season well into the fall. And by November, we start seeing a decrease in numbers, but they will show up still in December, as I said. Um, for Brown-headed cowbirds and common grackles, we have a similar pattern. They're coming in in um, mid to late February. So shortly after the red wings are showing up, we start to see the brown-headed cowbirds and the common grackles. We do have sporadic records for them in the wintertime, but again, um, not to be expected. Both these two species will be with us through the breeding season and then well into the fall, and they start tailing off in November with brown-headed cowbirds leaving us probably in the earlier part of November and common grackles maybe through till the end of the month. But by the time you get to December, you're not going to have very many records of either of those species. So one of our two primary birds that we wanted to look at today was the Brewer's Blackbird. And again, if we look at this uh, adult male, you can see that it's all dark, that does have the pale eye, and then it does still carry those structural features that we talked about, the bill shape, um, the leg length, the tail length. If we look at the female, you'll see that she's very gray in plumage. She does have a dark eye. And for the most part, you almost always will find that brewers, females will have that dark eye. If we look at um, a first year blackbird uh, brewers um, or non-breeding adult male, you'll find that the body 
feathers can have rusty edges to them. And so you'll find a lot of that in the head, find that on the back and maybe a little bit here on the breast. But if we go and look just a bit further, and if we look at the tertials, which are these three feathers here that are stacked up on the secondaries, you'll find that the edges of those feathers do not show any rufous at all. And that's quite different than what you would find on the rusty blackbird. In that case, you will find a lot of rufous on those edges. And again, you can also rely upon uh, all of the structural features that we were talking about a moment ago uh, that were, we were relaying to the male. So longer legs, uh, longer looking tail, and that straighter culmin on the bill. And that's all the same case with, all, with this bird as well. If we move on to the rusty blackbird, again, all the same features that we talked about earlier as far as structure, it does have the pale eye, does have slight curvature to the culmin here, narrower at the base, looking, making the bill look longer, shorter legs, and shorter tail. And we see all those characteristics in these images as well. This is a female here, and you can see her plumage is quite pale in color. Uh, she does have a very pale supercilium, and we would expect most often that female rusties will have that pale eye. It's not entirely um, counted on, but we generally expect to see a pale eye on these birds. If we look at the um, non-breeding or first year bird here, you can see it still will have that supercilium quite strong, uh, does carry on with all of those same structural features. We find that there's probably more rufous in the feather edges on this bird than we would find on brewers, and it'll extend down the belly quite far, quite a bit on the back, a lot in the head here. Um, but when we do look to the tertials, we'll see that these edges are actually rufous in color as well. And that's, we'll set it apart from the um, Brewer's Blackbirds. So some of the other main contenders that we'll want to talk about and take into consideration, the first would be uh, the common grackle. And the reason I have that in here is because it does have that pale eye and it can be in those mixed blackbird flocks, but it should be quite easily eliminated by the fact that it does have that long tail. It has this massive bill, very, very wide at the base, a lot of curvature to the culmin. It's a, it's a very long and large bill. And the structure of the bill coming back into the head does kind of give it a flattened look here, which is a bit different than what you would see in either of our brewers or rusty blackbirds. The brown-headed cowbirds um, can also lead to a little bit of confusion because you do all, have all of that brown here in the head and you do have um, uh, some glossiness here. But if you look at the bill, you'll see that it uh, is very wide at the base and it's a short bill, so it gives it a very stout dagger look. It does have a dark eye as well. What might give you some pause would be the female because she is very grayish in color and does have that dark eye, which all corresponds to the female brewer's blackbird. But again, taking a look structurally at that base of the bill and the length of the bill, you'll see it's this short stout dagger look to it. So it's quite different than what we would see on the um, female brewer's blackbird. So probably the most common species that we'll run into in the flocks would be the red-winged blackbirds. And we're all very familiar with red-winged blackbirds looking like this, but we're gonna have a lot of blackbirds that are not going to look like that. They're gonna look much more like this. And you'll see that there may not be any red at all showing in the wing. In fact, there may hardly be any of this um, a row of feathers here called the median coverts, which are uh, buffy in this plumage. So you might see a little streak of, of buff in here, which would be a dead giveaway that you're looking at a uh, red-winged blackbird. Or you also might notice that uh, all of the feather edges, as you get further down on the body, they're gonna go to more of a buffy color or a grayish color. So the scalloping effect that you get down here is gonna be quite different than anything you would see on a rusty blackbird. You might have some rusty edges up here in the upper back, but again, as you get further down, you'll see that the color is changing more to grays and, and buffs in color. So, and again, we do have this buffy uh, wing bar that will show up quite often. So look, look closely for that. The female should not give us too much pause because uh, it does have all of this streaking and none of the other birds that we've been talking about will have all of this streaking in the underparts. It does have a very buffy supercilium and it does have a lot of buff here in the throat, but it's those streaks here that are gonna be the dead giveaway for this bird. So we have a few things to keep in mind here as we uh, sort through our blackbirds. Uh, the brewers and rusty blackbirds can be separated from each other by some structural features. 
the brewers will have that straighter culmin. It'll have a longer tail and it'll have a long, longer legs. Where a rusty blackbird will have a curve to that culmin. Uh, the bill is narrower at the base, which makes it appear a bit longer than what we see on brewer's blackbird. And rusty blackbirds should have the shorter tail and the shorter legs. Female brewers will almost always have dark eyes and rusty females will almost always have pale eyes. Males of both species will have pale eyes. The first year or non-breeding male birds uh, of both species can have a lot of rufous edges on the body feathers, but you'll have to look a bit closer uh, at the tertials in order to determine whether it's rusty or brewers, uh, with rusty blackbird having rufous edges to those tertials. And rusty blackbirds can have a more obvious buff supercilium, then we, would, we wouldn't find that feature on a, a brewer's blackbird. Some of the other contenders to keep in mind would be the common grackle, which is going to have a pale eye, so that's why that's included in this conversation. Um, that looks very much like the males of both brewers and rusty blackbirds. But the grackle does have a longer, more curved bill that is wider at the base, and the common grackle does have a longer tail than both of the blackbirds. Brown-headed cowbird males do have a lot of brown on the head, but the bill is wider at the base and it's short. And so that gives it quite a different look than what we see on brewers or rusty blackbirds. It makes it look very dagger-like and stout. Now the brown-headed cowbird female and brewers female do have similar coloration, but the bill shape should differ significantly. Red-winged blackbirds might not always show the red in the wing, but they should be at least showing a fine edge of that, um, that row of feathers that we call the median coverts, and those should be buff in colors. That should show up um, at least slightly, and you know, with close observation, you should be able to notice that. And as we get further down on the body, uh, you might, on the upper body, you might have some uh, rufous edges to the feathers, but as you get further down, uh, those will turn more to buff or to a gray. And so the scallop look on the lower part will look quite different than what you would expect to find on, let's say, rusty blackbird. And European starlings, which are not a blackbird, uh, might also be in those mixed flocks that we've discussed. And so uh, they look quite different than anything that we've been talking about. Uh, you'll see that the, in this particular time of the year, the plumage is quite different. You'll see all the spotting here in the under parts. And, um, it's quite an attractive bird at this time of year. It does have a dark bill and does have dark eye. So uh, it should be easily eliminated from our, our conversation. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we have given you some bird food for thought. And I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.